You know, I've never been to a wedding where anyone objected to it. It always feels like some sort of contrived plot device for TVs and movies. I guess it does happen in real life, as these stories attest to, so let's get started. People who spoke up during a wedding objection. Story? Viewer edition. Story 1. Cousin's wedding. I was like 5 to 16 at the time, around the time the preacher said, or forever hold your peace. I kid you not, the bride's brother came into the room and shocked the whole crowd with the fact that he checked the family tree last night and, well, had a DNA test on both bride and groom. Turns out they were related. Yeah, not the whole distant cousin thing. Like the groom was the son of an uncle who moved away and went no contact with the whole family for years because the family cursed him out for doing some illegal stuff. We were not living in a small city. Sister's brother dude rechecked the groom's ancestry night before the day of the wedding because he wanted to see why no one on his side of the family showed up. Bride asked us not to be looked into, but Big Bro was drunk and he loved his K-dramas. Thankfully, the bride wasn't carrying by the time we found out later. The whole family hunted down said uncle. Turns out he just moved away by a city. A lot of fighting was involved, couldn't remember much, but my recent new cousin threw his own dad out the window. Nearly unalived him, too. Also ended up with a snapped neck. Dude was charged, but the judge was a family friend who was at the wedding and got him a light sentence, and the guy recently got out, and the family's been supportive of him since he got out. And the bride, she moved away. Like all the way to New Zealand, never to be heard from again till she learned he got out, they talked over Zoom, got all their emotions and feelings out of the way, and remain friends to this day. We later learned she was now working as an English teacher over there and was dating a guy who works as a pilot. So she has it made. As for the cousin, who figured out he was our cousin, well, he's doing real nice for himself these days. Not like he has it made, but the whole family welcome him with open arms. He now helps out at one of our aunt's restaurants and works full-time with one of my cousins at his construction company. As for the uncle, who no one has seen since forever, he's been living his life no contact as usual, but this time he moved away more than just one city. The man drove all the way to the other side of the country, not the U.S. Okay, that was a roller coaster. Not because all of the drama... Not because all of the ancestry drama. That story was just one big run-on sentence. On my script, there are no punctuation marks anywhere on that thing. I really had to donate some brain cycles to try and make sense of it while I was reading it. I hope that made sense to you. Story 2. So I got one. At my best friend's sister's wedding, we both served in the armed forces, and he asked if I would join him to it. So, I met his sister. Kindest person you could ever meet. Husband was a bit of a good... A good what? Good person? I'm gonna say good person. But you could tell he was head over heels for her. No, really. He tripped and tumbled several times before coming to rest at her feet when she called him over to introduce us. Then this banshee of a demon hellspawn arrived. Seems it was their mother. After the first five minutes of this woman going off and getting the bride in tears, I look at my buddy and we nodded and then proceeded to carry the women out kicking and screaming and people applauding. That's not where this day ends. Day of the wedding, somehow she's in the audience sitting next to an elder gentleman and what I assume to be their son. Me and my buddy change our seats to directly behind them. Preacher reached, If anyone has any objections... This woman jumps out of her seat like she just sat on a tack and started to yell, The bride is a... That's as far as she got before my buddy put a rag over her mouth and she went to sleep. Her husband stood up and I stood up with him. Husband sat back down. Their son sees this and seems to all of a sudden shrink slightly and find his shoes to be the most interesting thing in the world. Buddy sits the mother back in her chair. I check her pulse and announce... She's had a really bad day, but she'll be fine. Guests cheer and laugh, and once it started to die down, we hear, Boo! No blood! 
which gets another round of laughter. Lady was fine, had a hell of a headache when she came around, but by that time most of the festivities were over with. The bride still retells that story when I visit. My buddy is a proud uncle, and I'm a proud godfather. Wow, way to step up. This mother just wanted to make everything about her. She didn't care whose wedding she ruined. And this was definitely not the first time she acted like this, judging by everyone else's reaction. I swear, these two acted like ninja ushers. Story 3 I remember reading a story about a bride that had a big brother who was a major jerkwad growing up, always playing pranks on people and almost getting beaten up from one of them. Bride and family were chuckleheads into thinking that since it's her and her fiancé's wedding, he'll behave for once. When the priest asked the question, the brother stood up immediately, and to the bride's horror, he said, I want to say that my sister is pregnant with my friend's baby. Fiancé kinda knew about his pranking, but not to this extent. So the wedding was ruined because Fiancé left angrily, and the bride was sobbing her eyes out while the brother was also running for his life after getting sucker-punched by his dad and almost attacked by more people. In truth, she was never pregnant and never slept with anyone but the fiancé. Brother was banned and disowned after he finally came out with the truth. It took a couple years, but bride and fiancé got married without the waste of oxygen. Also, the brother was in his 30s. I don't blame the family for that kind of banishment. The man is a real-life troll. Did anyone believe this guy at first? This guy single-handedly delayed a wedding for three years. This poor woman was accused of something she had nothing to do with. What a jerkwad. Story 4. I have a friend who is a minister and was asked if he ever officiated a wedding that ended up being cancelled. He mentioned one time he, the groom, and the wedding guests were waiting for the bride and bridal party to turn up. And when they did, the bride and bridal party are inappropriately drunk, like they can barely stand, possibly not going to remember what happened the next day level of drunk. Turns out the bridal party decided to celebrate a little too early just before the wedding. The minister had to take them and the families aside in another room and explain to them, in that state, neither she nor her witness could legally sign the paperwork for the marriage because they were not in a state of sound mind to be able to do so. He suggested they sober up and come back the next day, which they did. Bride hung over, but sober. The guest turned up again for the second go, and he married them then. Story 5 my younger sister got married in June of 2022. Her husband has been a dear friend of the family and a man that has had money problems in his family. During the wedding, the courthouse wedding, that is, my mother objected, saying that she had someone richer in mind for my sister. The best man, my brother-in-law's best friend, jokingly jumped at the objection, being like, Now that's interesting, which my brother-in-law didn't really like. For context, my sister isn't exactly spoiled, but she is a bit extravagant. If she were to marry a billionaire, she would have the time of her life, mostly because she wants so many things that she doesn't really need. Anyway, my mother then explained that it was just a joke, and we all had a good laugh as the ceremony continued. I'm German, so the courthouse wedding is the one to be counted as married. You can have a ceremony and a reception, but you need someone from the courthouse to officiate. Otherwise, it doesn't count. Story 6. This is what happened at my dad's wedding. I was his best man, which was truly an honor since our relationship had been rocky and at times awful most of my life, only getting better in recent years. We get to the church venue and start to finish the decor. Being that I had the rings, my younger sister asked me if I could pretend to propose to her and I did it for the laughs. She said no, and at this point in time, all her romantic encounters have ended in travesty. Afterwards, my dad and his bride-to-be were arguing during the ceremony over who should get the rings first, with me as the awkward man in the middle of them thinking, this is ridiculous. I shoved one of the rings to my dad and said, ladies first, and my dad put the ring on her finger, and lastly, 
We arrive outside to see people playing bagpipes. I will not elaborate further. I gotta say, there are worse things to argue about during a wedding. It sounds like a polite contest. No, you first. Oh, no, no, no. You first. It's a good thing it got sorted out. Story 7. When I was about five, I was the flower girl at my aunt's wedding. I remember absolutely none of it because I apparently fell asleep not long after my grandpa, the pastor, rest in peace, started the ceremony. Like, I just curled up on the altar next to the bridesmaids and took a nap. My great-grandmother, also rest in peace, actually went to the church's nursery and got me a pillow and blanket. My whole family finds it hilarious, and I'm a little embarrassed about it looking back. Though, in my defense, my grandpa was a very passionate preacher and had a tendency to drag out his sermons way longer than necessary. He apparently wound up doing this at the wedding, too, but he was really happy and proud to see my aunt, his youngest child, get married. He also apparently never noticed that I slept through the whole ceremony until it was brought up at the reception. Story 8. This is actually a proposal story rather than a wedding objection story. When I was a kid, I went hiking with my uncle and his girlfriend at some local hiking trail in our area. When we were done, I was asked to sit in the car while they went out to talk. I didn't hear what they were talking about, but I could see both were very happy with each other on the way home to drop me off. Turns out my uncle had proposed to her, but I, for whatever reason, just didn't notice or understand what that was all about. Making this funnier was that they didn't even tell my parents the good news when they dropped me off. It was actually during the wedding that this story was made public when the preacher called me out during the service in regards to the event. It was my one moment of glory. Story 9. Secondhand Story. A friend of mine confided in me that his old crush was about to get married with a supposed jerk and told me that he would do it. I told him that maybe he should instead try talking to her beforehand instead, rather than crash on her day and make it awkward for her and her family. He told me that I didn't get it. I didn't see what happened, but I saw the aftermath at the front of the church, where cops were taking testimonies. I heard that a fist fight ensued and somehow degenerated into a full-on brawl. The wedding got cancelled and the friend cut ties with me because I didn't back him up. The guy that broke up the wedding was delusional. It's sad that a friendship ended. It's probably for the best, though. I think this guy should have warned the girl ahead of time. Maybe keep an eye out for the guy at the wedding. But what was the reason this wedding was cancelled? Couldn't the groom see this was just some knucklehead crush? Story 10. Do have one. My uncle was in his fourth marriage. Fourth? With a nice girl that we all agree was his true significant other this time. My uncle's best friend would miss out the most of the start of the wedding, but showed up for the party. He was dealing with delicate matters in his own family, so my uncle completely understood. Everything was going well. Then the priest started to ask the objection part, and my uncle's friend appeared behind everyone and screams, Wait! Everyone was shocked looking at him, while he recovered himself because he looked like he had run an entire freaking marathon. He takes a deep breath and says, Ya folks got the rings mixed up. These are yours. Story 11. Okay, so this guy I had been in love with for years was having a wedding, and since we were in a small town, word got around quickly. And since I was uninvited by his lovely bride-to-be, I showed up. Her entire family was wearing shades of pastels as she walked down the aisle like a pageant queen in her gown shaped like a pastry. When the pastor said, speak now, I stood up as I watched people's eyes go from happy to horrified. But I look at him and say, you are not the kind of guy to be marrying the wrong girl. We met up at the back gate of the church. We lived happily ever after. Speak now, random girl's version. If you know, you know. Story 12. A guy objected in my friend's wedding back in 2019. Turns out it was a guy who admitted he was stalking her and watched her every move since college. He begged for her to give her a chance to prove himself a better man than the groom. No one knows who he is. 
Being the best man, I had to intervene. I got some friends of ours to help me escort the guy out of the church. Once we were out of there, I hoisted the mongrel in a firearms carry and deposited him next to a police officer outside. All I said was, This dude confessed to stalking the bride, so is your problem now. Then I walked back to the ceremony. Good guy, best man. Acted swiftly and correctly. This is probably the only wedding where the bride had to take out a restraining order before going on her honeymoon. She probably tried to convince the husband to move to whatever exotic location they went to for their honeymoon. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Story 13 my best friend became engaged to her abusive high school girlfriend months after graduation, i.e., I'm sorry I called you stupid and fat. If you take me back, I'll marry you. No one else can love you like me anyway. When she told me she'd proposed, I was like, Oh, really? That's nice. Do you have a date in mind? She was really upset that I wasn't all excited. I was very excited, however, when they broke up and when her now wife properly proposed. You better believe I would have objected had she married her first girlfriend. Story 14. I imagine when the parents say they object, their daughter did not want to see them for a very long time since there's no way you can have any time with the in-laws and not feel the tension in the air. Same with a brother who just has a problem with whipping it out. He doesn't, he does it on purpose to make people uncomfortable, especially a sibling. I imagine if they have the nerve to ask the question of why they don't see the married couple, it would be a facepalm through the head because it's a big duh answer. Story 15. I was at my uncle's wedding and when the dude says, Does anyone have any objections? The smallest tiny dude, must have been like three, stood up and said, Yeah, because you said you were going to buy me a fishing rod. But you didn't. Then the mom of that kid stands up, whips out a picture, and it turns out that it was of the bride cheating on the groom, my uncle. The wedding got canceled, and the bride was sent to the hospital after three women and two men beat her up for sleeping with the groom's brother. Story 16. My girlfriend, my stepsisters, and I all objected to my mom marrying my ex-stepfather. It should say something when even his own kids thought he was a piece of poop and she shouldn't marry him. Thankfully, we proved him wrong when he said he'd destroy us and we'd never work anywhere again after he left. It took years to recover from debt, but now Mom is enjoying living the influencer life and being the envy of her friends. And I'm doing okay, I guess. Never did learn to trust in checks again, though. Story 17 Objections at weddings are legal or financial reasons, not petty feelings got hurt. Examples are party already being married to another, pre-existing vows of celibacy or commitment to the church, being underage without parental consent or close blood relations, said fiancé is abusive, and more. So, yes, you can object as long as it has a legal or valid reason that would go against the state, not I'm an ex and I feel petty, or I'm a parent and I don't like the fiancé. Those are not legal reasons to object, and the court will laugh them out. Story 18. I was hired to play some music at a wedding of people I didn't know. All the groomsmen were classically decked out in basic black, except the father of the groom. He was wearing a black tux with Warner Brothers cartoon characters on his tie and cummerbund. I asked someone about it. Apparently, the father of the groom was something of a joker. The first time his son brought his fiancée home to meet the family, the dad looked shocked at his son and said, She doesn't need to lose weight. Story 19. If they ask the question about if anyone knows any reason why they should not be married, if anyone speaks up even as a joke, then legally the wedding needs to be called off until investigated. Friend attended a wedding where the best man made the joke. My friend told me the story later where he had become a minister and was asking if he wanted that question to be asked. Some churches have a policy where it must be asked. Story 20. My son, two at the time, shouted out, Don't do it, auntie, leaving out name to protect the guilty, as soon as she got to the altar. No idea why. 
He was also the page boy, so was right up front. I was a bridesmaid and was mortified. Everyone just laughed and it went ahead fine. She does say now she wishes she listened to him, since he was obviously right as they recently finalized their divorce. Story 21 Me and my fiancé will have a medieval wedding in summer, and our plan was that each of us will carry a sword like we're both knights, and as soon as the line about objections comes, we'll grab the handle of our swords tight and look at the crowd like we dare them to say anything. <laughs> Sadly, I already know who's going to put up a scene, so yeah, I hope it will be okay. Story 22 I saw this one green guy object at a princess's wedding, and the groom sent the guards to arrest him, but he fought them off, and then a dragon crashed through the window with a donkey on its back, and there was a big fight where the groom got eaten by the dragon, and then the princess and the green guy kissed, and the princess turned green too. It was wild. Story 23 So I was at this wedding. The groom and bride had already made their vows and kissed, and were about to make the final march outside. When we all reached outside the church, a limousine suddenly arrived. A man came out, and he had a lot of those long and taffy-like chewing gums. And then he stormed off with the groom, leaving the bride. Story 24 At my nephew's second wedding, my ten-year-old son stood up when the objection question was offered, and he said, He's still married to that other woman, which was inconveniently true. Hilarity ensued. A few months later, everything got straightened out. Thirty years later, my nephew and niece are still going strong. My son still tells inconvenient truths. Story 25 I was at a wedding where the groom left in the middle of the service, just turned around and walked down the aisle. Everyone looked around, stunned for a minute. Then the bride's father walks down the aisle, and two minutes later comes back with the runaway groom. The wedding went on. They were divorced in a couple of years. Story 26 I was at my great-uncle Jerry's wedding to his second wife. Her name's Pam. Anyway, Pam's brother is giving a speech, and all he's doing is trashing on my great-uncle. At one point in the speech, he even mentioned the ex-wife, and everyone audibly gasped. He was kicked out. Not exactly objected, but definitely ruined. Story 27 Aren't there legal obligations to halt things if someone seriously objects? What is it with most stories just leaving the floor open to objections with literally no purpose? If anyone would like to sour the mood with a pointless opinion before we marry these two, please do so now. Story 28 I would have been the person to speak up and object to a wedding. However, my friend made sure not to invite me to his wedding so that wouldn't happen. My objection was that you shouldn't marry someone six months after you first started dating especially when you got engaged one week after you started dating. Story 29 My friend's daughter and her fiancé belonged to a small motorcycle club. At their wedding, when the minister asked if anyone had any objections, all the guys in the club stood up. Fortunately, the minister had a sense of humor and realized it was a prank. The wedding proceeded smoothly after that. Story 30 when my parents got married, my grandfather on my father's side was the priest who did the wedding ceremony. As well as being a priest, he also worked as a taxi driver. Suffice it to say, my father's family grew up in much harder circumstances than my mother, since her father was a stockbroker. Story 31. When my dad and my mom were getting married, my dad says my grandpa held open the car door and said, Last chance as in last chance to get out of what would be a hellstorm that would await my dad. My dad didn't listen and went through a really bad divorce. Story 32. My mom's fiancé knew if given the chance her family would speak up to object to their wedding, even if in a joking way, so he made sure they didn't even have the option of the words if anyone objects to this wedding, speak now or forever hold your peace from the priest. Story 33. As my soon-to-be wife was walked down the aisle, my grandfather could be heard saying, Run, boy. Don't do it. She's too fat to catch you. Only my family heard it. Until we watched the videotape at the reception. It was picked up loud and clear. Story 34. It gets me thinking. Wedding ceremonies are really special and all, 
But why do they even have the, if you have any objections, please let it be known now, and so on and so forth. So many weddings ruined at that moment. Story 35. I debated going to the wedding of my ex to do an expose of my ex as a con artist, but I didn't want to end up on social media. But a rotten fruit will fall off the tree whether I try to shake it off the tree or not. Story 36. My godfather, my dad's best man, wrote help on my dad's shoes when he married my mom. Everyone was giggling when they saw it. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.